Kelvin is an ugly, lonely loser who finds himself in a new world where he has the powers of a summoner. While trying to keep his powers a secret with the help of a goddess, he collects all sorts of different monsters, aiming to become the strongest summoner in the world. Kelvin suddenly regains consciousness and finds himself in a strange place under a tree in a forest. While wondering where he is, a menu bar shows up with an option for him to click on the start button. After clicking the start option, he hears a soothing female voice which tells him that she is the goddess of reincarnation. She welcomes him to another world where he has been chosen to be reincarnated. Also, she explains to him that he had chosen to give up memories of his old world. On hearing this, Kelvin becomes shocked, and he begins to blame his pre-incarnated self for being so stupid that he would agree to this. At that moment, the goddess tells him that he should look at the menu bar to see the skills he had chosen before he reincarnated, and after checking out the cool skills, he becomes pleased with the skills he sees which makes him commend his reincarnated self. The goddess informs Kelvin that he is in a world full of magic and fantasies, and the first thing he would have to do is to go to a nearby town to look for the Adventurer's Guild to register as an adventurer. On the way there, the goddess reveals her name as Nelfina. She tells Kelvin that his past self had fallen in love with her and confessed to this to her. She continues that she had joined him in this life as a form of vacation for herself, due to the fact that she had been working for hundreds of years without rest. She also adds that he had said he would love her without his memories and since he sounded sincere, she allowed him to trade his memories for skills. While he communicates with Melfina in his mind, the people around assume he has gone mad. When he notices that he is being watched, Kelvin immediately runs away and goes to a corner to calm himself down. His slutty mind thinks that Melfina must be his type for him to have loved and fallen for her. He adds that he needs to see her, and seeks to know if she can be summoned. She replies that he cannot summon her yet as he does not have enough power to do that. She tells him that she would watch him grow and learn more skills to enable him to do this and tell her how much he loves her. But Kelvin strongly believes he would not do such a thing. As they get to the Adventurer's Guild, Melfina announces their arrival to Kelvin, and he immediately likes the building. When he goes inside, he meets the cute-looking attendant and tells her that he would like to register. She gives him a form to fill, and he immediately realizes that he can understand the language. Just as he is about to write, Melfina immediately asks him if he is going to write that he is a summoner. Being a clueless dummy, he says yes. Hearing this, she tells him not to since skills as a summoner is a very rare one which would attract the attention of people with high status. Due to this, Kelvin registers himself as a green mage and takes up a job to defeat three blue slimes that Melfina advises him to take. Before leaving the guild, he buys a magic wooden rod, which would help to defeat the blue slimes then Melfina tells him that the rod he had bought is not entirely ordinary, as it has just a little amount of magic he needs. On getting to where the slimes are, Melfina tells Kelvin to use one of his skills, called the Appraisal Eye, to see the status bar of his target. Kelvin suddenly asks Melfina if he is unable to see her status bar, because she is above level 100 and she ignores his question. Deviating from the task at hand, he insists on knowing how much power he would need in order to summon her. With Melina acting like she can't hear him, he remembers his tasks and decides to leave his questions for Melfina, for when he is done finishing his quest, he becomes focused on having a contract with one of the slimes. Melfina tells him that he has to get the consent of his target in order to do that and for the slime which possesses no speech ability, he has to weaken them and not kill them so that they would give him their consent. Kelvin immediately rushes towards the slimes to attack them with his wooden rod, but he falls to the ground after being hit by one of the slimes. Kelvin realizes his carelessness and continues to try to defeat the slime but he gets hit and as he tells himself that he has to watch carefully. He immediately sees that he can defeat the slime by watching closely, and he suddenly hits the slime and he is able to make it weak. Kelvin tries the contract, and when he asks Melfina how to make the slime understand the contract, she tells him to stretch his arm forward then he begins to feel a rush of energy in his arm. Kelvin asks Melfina what is happening to him and she explains to him that he is feeling like that because of the magic he had used in defeating the slime, but because he wants to use the contract, it would also cost him some of his health points. Kelvin suddenly yells at Melfina, asking her why she had not told him about that earlier, but he ignores her and tries the contract. When he tries the contract, he immediately absorbs the slime into himself and Melfina, tells him excitedly that he has completed the contract and he is able to communicate with the monster he had absorbed. 
She also adds that he has to give the monster a name then Kelvin names the slime Clotho. Kelvin suddenly notices that he can feel a sensation in his chest, and when he asks Melfina, she tells him that he can communicate with Clotho without words as he is able to feel what Clotho is feeling. He also proceeds to try his summoning skills, and when he summons Clotho, it comes out and he tells Clotho that he would allow him to absorb other slimes they defeat together after Melfina jokingly calls him a monster for making Clotho absorb his kind. Soon, Clotho and Kelvin come across some slimes, and before they attack the slimes, Kelvin notices how Clotho's body grew a little bit bigger. But he also recounts how he is anticipating Clotho's growth. The duo attacks the slimes and as Kelvin kills one of the slimes, Clotho also deals with the rest of the slimes on its own. Together, they defeat the three slimes but when Kelvin checks Clotho's data, he sees that Clotho has become stronger since he met him. Kelvin suddenly thinks out loud as he wonders how unfair it is for him to have great skills as it is unfair to other ranked adventurers. Then Melfina adds to Kelvin's thought that he is the only summoner in the country. Then Kelvin becomes convinced of the reason why every country needs a summoner. After the fight, the attendant at the guild named Ainge pays Kelvin and also recommends an inn for him to spend the night. On his way to the inn, Kelvin asks Melfina why she had not given him enough money from the beginning so that he would be able to buy better weapons, but she replies that if she had done that, he would not have fun making money by himself. Suddenly, Kelvin sees some men trading slaves and his attention becomes fixed on a beautiful elf slave among them, but he wonders why she had a weird-looking brace on her neck. Then the slaver explains to the men that the elf is of a mixed blood, but Kelvin stares at the elf who in turn looks at him and faces down in her cage. However, he immediately leaves the place and when he gets to the inn, he meets Claire, who is in charge of the inn. Kelvin goes to his room, and when he asks Melfina if there is a bath in his room, she replies that it is only castles that have baths and commoners are meant to take their bath in rivers or with hot towels. On hearing this, Kelvin decides that he would work hard enough so that he would live in a house with a bath someday. Kelvin's stomach begins to cry for help, and he goes to meet Claire, who serves him some delicious food. Melfina tells him to grow fast, so that he would have enough magic powers to summon her, and so she can get the chance to eat human food. After a week of taking more jobs as an adventurer, Kelvin levels up as he takes more dangerous jobs, and he is also able to upgrade Clotho as well. On getting to the Adventurer's Guild, Ange informs Kelvin that he has upgraded to an E-rank due to the jobs he has been finishing, and she advises him to change his gear. However, a proud-looking young man who has been watching and listening to Ainge and Kelvin's conversations comes to meet Kelvin. He steps out like a top G and introduces himself as Cashel, who is a ranked adventurer, and the other adventurers in the guild begin to talk about how Cashel loves to hold a typical weird conversation with new adventurers, so that they would begin to feel less of themselves so as not be as good as he is. Cashel informs Kelvin that he is going after the Black Ghost Knight with the rest of his party, and he also asks Kelvin if he would like to follow them, so that they would share the rewards, then Ainge tells Cashel that the job is too dangerous for Kelvin but Cashel replies Ainge with pride, as he tells her that he would make sure Kelvin is safe. Kelvin declines Cashel's offer, and he uses his appraisal eyes to check his stats, and he sees that they are as high as Clotho's. Then he tells Cashel that they should have a competition and Cashel pridefully agrees. Kelvin tells Melfina that he would deliberately walk into Cashel's trap, so that he would be able to catch him when he tries to kill him because of Cashel's past records as a murderer. As Melfina comes to talk about Kelvin's decision to take Cashel down, Kelvin yells at her loudly forgetting that he was supposed to use his inner voice for her to keep quiet but Ainge and the rest of the attendant in the guild keeps quiet. They wish Kelvin good luck because they thought he was talking to them as they were talking while he leaves the guild. Cashel goes away from the guild and when he gets to a corner in the streets, he meets another man. The man informs him that he is not able to see Kelvin's abilities because he is using a type of concealing magic. One member of Cashel's party, Raj, who looks like a homeless shithead, comes out and he tells the rest of the party that he would make sure he crushes Kelvin. Wait a minute! Later at the Wicked Spirit's castle, Cashel and his party run into the castle, but on getting inside, they realize that all the undead monsters have been defeated before their arrival. But when they begin to question each other, Kelvin comes out and he tells Cashel and his party that he is going to win the competition. The bald-headed dummy called Raj tells Kelvin that he is only waiting for them because he knows he would not be able to defeat the Black Ghost Knight. Kelvin begins to provoke the party as he hopes to get some action while fighting with them and Cashel asks him 
if he is planning to receive the bounty on them, but Kelvin who is not aware of the bounty, tells them that he might just be lucky. Cashel calls on Raj, who is the strongest in the party to attack Kelvin. Just as Raj runs to attack Kelvin, he falls into a trap Kelvin had set with his green mage magic, which allows him to start sinking into mud, and he is not able to get out then, Cashel begins to wonder how he is able to set the trap, as that kind of magic takes time to be activated. Jimmel, who is the third member of the party apologizes to Cashel that he was not able to detect the concealment with his magical powers, then he runs away as he tells Raj and Cashel that Kelvin is dangerous. Melthina tells Kelvin that Jimmels is running away and Cashel is trying to attack him, but Kelvin tells her that it is all part of his plan, and he immediately summons Clotho to stop Jimmel. Clotho, who is no longer a blue slime but a huge slime Glatonia, appears in front of Jimmel and stops him, but as he tries to run, Clotho suddenly attacks him. Meanwhile, Raj uses his skills to get out of the mud trap, and when he tells Cashel that he would attack Clotho the slime, Clotho suddenly uses its tentacles to tie him and Cashel gets beaten up by Kelvin. Melfina tells Kelvin that he has to go and face the Black Ghost Knight after defeating Cashel and his party, and when Kelvin enters the room where the knight is, he sees the knight and also his stats, and he tells the knight named Gerard that he wants him to be in his party. Gerard tells Kelvin how people see him as a monster, but Kelvin tells himself that Gerard is just a man that wants someone to talk to. Kelvin asks Gerard if he would be at his party and sign a contract with him, but Gerard tells him that he had been serving a king before, and he had a responsibility to avenge the death of his wife and daughter. Kelvin challenges Gerard to a duel and while fighting, Kelvin realizes how strong Gerard is as he is able to block attacks from his blind spots, but a few minutes later, Kelvin defeats Gerard and he agrees to the contract. Kelvin goes back to the guild, the other adventurers in attendance congratulate him and thank him as well for helping them to capture Cashel and his party for their atrocities. Ainge goes to meet Kelvin and she tells him that he has been promoted to a higher rank, and the head of the guild would thank him properly. While going to meet the head, Gerard asks Kelvin if Ainge would be suitable for his harem, and when Gerard and Elfina with Clotho begins to discuss about how Ainge is good for Kelvin's harem, but Kelvin shuts them up as he tells them not to talk inside his head, then Melfina suddenly tells Kelvin that there is someone in front of him. The old man tells Kelvin that the day is bright for adventurers as it is the right time for them to get jobs done, and he also adds that he is also the head of the guild named Leo. Leo begins to use his appraisal eye to check Kelvin's stats so his stock know who he really is, and when Kelvin also uses his appraisal eyes to check Leo's abilities, he realizes that Leo has a rank A appraisal eye, which means that he would be able to see through his concealment magic and also see that he is a summoner. Leo invites Kelvin to his office, and he tells him about Cashel, and he also tells him that he knows about him being a summoner. On hearing this, Kelvin becomes uneasy that he has been found out, then Melfina and Gerard tell him to be calm as they would be with him in case of any emergency. Kelvin then asks Leo why he did not capture Cashel and his party, as he would have known who they are with his appraisal eye. But Leo apologizes for that as he tells Kelvin that he had been making plans to stop Cashel that Kelvin had captured him before he was able to do so. Stop the cap! Leo also adds that he is not trying to be Kelvin's enemy as he had met others from another world, who are called the heroes of the Holy Empire of Duramus. Kelvin becomes surprised and Elfina tells him new information that she had reincarnated a lot of people. She states that she would tell him about it later as they all need to focus on Leo and what he is saying. Leo explains further that the priestess of Duramus had heard of the prophecy of God and summoned all the heroes of Duramus, as the revival of the demon king had come upon them. And the reason the knight Kelvin defeated is strong is also because of the revival of the demon king. Leo informs Kelvin that the heroes are not able to protect them. Because Kelvin has the skills of a rankous adventurer, he accepts Leo's offer. On getting to his inn, Kelvin sees Claire, and she immediately hugs him to congratulate him on his job making him feel accomplished in his job. When Kelvin asks her how she knows about it, she tells him that other young adventurers are talking about him and how awesome he is. Claire tells Kelvin that she would make him a nice lunch while he goes to his room. While eating, Kelvin asks Melfina about the people she reincarnated. She tells him that when the priestess performed his summing magic, she found people to reincarnate and those people would be in a good and high rank, but the whole issue does not have anything to do with him. After his meal, Kelvin lays down on his bed, and while he begins to think about the situation of the heroes and the demon king, he summons Clotho and asks it for the reward money he had given him. With this money, he heads out, 
and informs Claire before he leaves that she should prepare two plates of food for him for dinner. On his way, Gerard asks him what he is going to buy then he replies Gerard that he is going to get a female slave. Kelvin goes to the place he had seen an elf for sale, but on getting there, he sees that a man is yelling and the owner of the slaves for sale is trying to help the man to put out the fire on his body. When Kelvin asks what was happening, the owner of the slaves for sale tells him that the mixed breed elf has a curse on her that sets anyone who touches her on fire. Kelvin looks at the slave, and he leaves as he asks Melfina the skills he needs so as to break the curse on the slave girl but few minutes later. Kelvin comes back to meet the owner of the slaves for sale, and he tells the man that he would like to buy the elf slave, but the man tells him that the elf is cursed, as he had witnessed what had happened to the man that wanted to buy her earlier that day. While the man was trying to convince Kelvin not to buy the elf slave, Kelvin immediately drops a bag of money on his palm, and the man keeps quiet as he opens the cage and tells the elf that Kelvin is her new master. The elf gets out, and Kelvin uses his appraisal eyed to check the elf's stats and he sees that she has not used any of her points. After buying the slave, the elf follows Kelvin, and she immediately thanks him for buying her, and they both introduce each other as the girl tells Kelvin that her name is Ifil. Kelvin proceeds to use his powers to break her curse, and he asks her how long she has been a slave for, and she explains to him that she was sold after she was born, and she has been a slave since then, but Kelvin tells her that she would leave a good life as he removes her cuffs. Aphil begins to cry as she kneels in front of Kelvin, and she tells him that she would be his servant, then Nelfina tells Kelvin that she would allow Aphil to serve Kelvin till he is able to summon her. Kelvin takes Aphil to the inn and after he introduces her to Claire. He asks Claire if she would be able to find good clothes for her, and immediately Claire tells him that she would have to take care of the clothes before she serves him dinner. After going with Aphil for a few minutes, Claire comes out and she presents Aphil to Kelvin, who becomes surprised on seeing Ephel look so beautiful in made clothes. After dinner, Kelvin takes Ephel to his room, and he introduces the rest of his party to her as he tells her of his power as a summoner. Then he lets Ephel pick the same skills as himself so that he would be able to train her very well. That night, Kelvin becomes stressed as he gets into a dilemma when Claire tells him that there is no room with two beds. Due to this, he is forced to share a bed with Ephel who had fallen asleep beside him leaving him with different thoughts of plot development. After a month of fighting in Kelvin's party, Ifil has become a good archer and she also learns sewing while Kelvin learns blacksmithing. After finishing a job, Kelvin and Ifil go to the guild and Ainge commends them for a job well done, and she also adds that they are doing great as they have finished their ninth job in a row which would qualify them to take the rank up examinations coming up later. Kelvin tells Ifil that she is becoming better and she would be a rank B adventurer soon as she is only in rank C. Ainge asks Ephel if she would be willing to go with her to the new sweet shop opening in the city and Ephel immediately agrees because she sees it as an opportunity to make a new friend. However, she suddenly asks Kelvin if he would love to go, but as Kelvin begins to think of what to say to Ephel, Ainge tells him that he should not turn down Ephel's offer. The following day, Kelvin waits for the two ladies but he stupidly has thoughts of the hangout being a date with the two ladies, but he tells himself that it is not a date and Melfina would have told him what is happening and what to do if she had not left his servant network that morning to go and attend to other things. Ainge calls Kelvin from afar, and when she moves closer to him, she tells Kelvin that he should be free around her, and she also asks about Ephel. Kelvin reveals that Ephel had told her that he should not wait for her so that she would take her time to dress up. Suddenly, Ifil shows up in a beautiful gown different from the maid outfit she wears, and this dress makes her more beautiful than she used to be. Oh my god! Wow! When she moves closer to ancient Kelvin, she asks them if the dress looks good on her and Kelvin tells her that she looks beautiful. Ainge tells Ifil that she is becoming plump, and she becomes excited, then they all sit around a table while they are served their sweets. While eating the sweets, Ifil tries to feed Kelvin and Ainge, sees them in the act, but then she tells Kelvin that it is so lovely for Ifil to be feeding him his food, but Kelvin tries to deny it. Ifil becomes confused as she thinks she has done a bad thing but Ainge also tries to feed Kelvin, which makes everyone present notice that the two ladies are trying to feed one man. While trying to figure out what to do, Kelvin tells the ladies to stop as they are attracting the attention from the crowd but someone suddenly kicks their table away, and when Kelvin checks, he sees a short man and two huge men as his bodyguards. Kelvin asks the man what was going on, and one of the guards tells Kelvin that the short man is Tabra, who is the Prince of Trison, 
and he adds that Kelvin has offended his prince. Tapra then tells Kelvin that he would punish him for what he has done, but he would let him go if he allows Ainge and Ephil to serve him for the night. Kelvin becomes angry, and he uses his power on the guards who attack him because he did not answer Tabra. Kelvin tells Tabra that his guards are weak, but he suddenly uses his power to hit Tabra, so as to get the reason he is in the city, and Tabra confesses that he is in the city to confirm the rumors he had heard that a powerful adventurer is living in the city. Kelvin tells Tabra that he is the adventurer he is looking for, but he uses his powers to knock Tabra out. Meanwhile, at the shrine of the priestess of Duramus, the priestess named Colette begins to summon Melthina the goddess, and when Melthina appears, Colette becomes excited, and she tells the goddess that she should give them her oracle then. Melthina tells her that she feels an evil presence from the westward continent, but she also warns Colette that she should yell the heroes to stay away from Parth. Later that night, Aethel thanks her master Kelvin for saving her life, and she also confessed her love to Kelvin. In response, Kelvin tells her that she is the most beautiful and attractive lady he has seen. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! On hearing this, Zelda suddenly hugs Kelvin and he tells himself that he has to buy a house so that they would have separate rooms as he cannot hold on for long. The next day, the whole party begins to check out their weapons, and when Ephil comes in, she asks Kelvin if Melfina is back and Clotho gives her a little Clotho so that she would be able to join the servant network. While the party checks out their new and upgraded gears, Claire knocks on the door and she informs Kelvin that the guild had sent for him. Leo tells Kelvin that they have heard of a demon in a place, but they have used some magical powers to seal the area where the demon was found but Kelvin assures also that he would take the job. Kelvin goes with Gerard and Ethel, but when people ask him who Gerard is, he tells them that Gerard is his friend who had come to help him. Kelvin and Ephil, along with Gerard and Clotho, get to the underground part of the hut and they see a demon with another female demon who is tied. The demon introduces himself as an Arctiman named Victor, and he tells Kelvin and his party that he needs to consume their characteristics so that he would be able to unlock and break the seal on the female demon, who is the daughter of the demon king. Kelvin begins to fight with Victor and Victor is unable to read his emotions as he is smiling and not looking scared or nervous. Then Gerard tells Ephil that Kelvin has a bad habit of laughing while fighting. Victor sees that Kelvin is smiling devilishly at him, and he confirms that Kelvin is strong then he immediately uses his black magic to call the Hades army of the dead, and the skeletons of the dead monsters begin to attack Kelvin and his party. Kelvin tells Gerard that he would take care of the army from behind, and after the whole party, clears out the Hades army Victor, created by working together at a fast pace. Victor watches Kelvin and Gerard as they fight, then he begins to think aloud that Kelvin is young, but surprisingly powerful, and the members of his party are all working at a faster pace than he had imagined. Victor tells Kelvin that he is a battle junkie, and he would make sure he wipes out the smile from Kelvin's face. Suddenly, he uses his magic powers to go underground, so that he would be able to attack Kelvin and his party without them noticing him. But when he tries to attack Kelvin and Gerard, they see the attack coming, and they immediately dodges it. Victor begins to wonder how they are able to see him attacking them. But after trying to defeat Victor, Kelvin tells Victor that he has noticed that physical attacks do not work on him, so he would have to try magic absorption on him. Kelvin summons Clotho, and when Clotho attacks Victor, he immediately uses his magic powers to push Clotho away. But Kelvin suddenly uses a magic absorption skill on Victor, so as to make him unable to move, then he tells Gerard that the magic absorption would not be able to hold Victor down, because he is too strong. Victor uses his second hand and he tries to attack Kelvin from his back, but Ethel immediately shoots her arrow at him and Gerard also uses his sword to slash one of Victor's hands off. Victor breaks through the magic absorption, and he suddenly evolves to a huge monster with wings and a complete set of arms, but the whole party fights with him, and they eventually defeat him as they all combine their magic abilities and strength, while Clavo shoots all the weapons Kelvin had used as a form of practice in his blacksmithing skill. Victor looks at the daughter of the Demon King, and he immediately uses his last strength to prevent a huge boulder from falling on her. While he collapses due to the fact that he cannot use both of his arms after returning back to his normal body. Kelvin goes to meet Victor who tells him that they have won him, but Kelvin asks him if he was going to really eat the Demon King's daughter named Sarah and Victor tells him that he was not going to eat her as he intentionally lied, because he had been appointed by Gustav to take care of her, so that the Demon King's enemies would not be able to get to her. Victor explains to them that Gustav had put a seal on Sarah, that only the humans can unlock, 
so that the heroes and his demon enemies would not be able to get to her and the seal which was activated when Gustav died. This made her sleep even though she might be hearing what they are saying but she had been locked by the seal, so that when the hero finds her and sets her free, she would be able to live in a peaceful era. Victor tells them that he had planned to give Sarah a better life, where she would be able to know how the world works as she had been locked in a mansion all her life, and he also requests that Kelvin should add Sarah to his party as she must have woken up from her slumber. Then Melfina confirms that Sarah is awake, but she has not opened her eyes yet. Victor also adds that he has seen that Kelvin is a good person who is also a summoner. Kelvin becomes surprised at Victor's request, then he asks him if he would be his servant if he heals him, but Victor politely declines Kelvin's offer as he tells him that he only serves the Demon King, and it is already too late. Victor dies but his dying wish is that Kelvin should show Sarah the world, then Kelvin goes to break the seal and he asks Sarah if she can hear him, then she immediately opens her eyes, and she tells him that her father and Victor are stupid, and she also begins to cry. On getting outside, Sarah is able to hide her identity as a demon because of a camouflage skill her father had given her, and when the party meets Erd, they give him a horn as a proof of them, defeating the demon, and they also tell him that Sarah is a victim that the demon had possessed. Kelvin adds that Erd should go to the Adventurers Guild to have the attendants appraise the horn just for him to be sure. Gerard begins to evolve and after he tells the rest of the party that he is feeling better then Kelvin begins to make fun of him, as he tells him that he looked like he wanted to pee, but as all of them laugh at Gerard, Kelvin goes to meet Sarah and he asks her if she is feeling better, and she tells him that she is okay, but she asks him if he is sure that he wants her to be in his party as he would be in a huge trouble if people finds out. Kelvin tells her not to worry about it as he would make sure anyone with an appraisal eye does not see her stats but she asks him if he is the heart they are talking about, and he tells her that he is just an adventurer, who likes to fight a little then the rest of the party becomes shocked as Kelvin tells Sarah an understatement of his love for fights. Soon they all go to the town as Kelvin tells Sarah, not to be nervous as she has been out of her castle before, but when they get to Parth, Sarah becomes excited as she sees new and fascinating things. She begins to ask Eiffel and Gerard questions about her new environment, then Kelvin smiles while looking at her as he also remembered how he had felt about when he first entered the new world. He also tells Ephil to take Sarah back to their inn as he goes to report his executed job. Kelvin gets promoted to rank A and when he gets to his inn, he also recounts how they had told him that if they found a demon ranked higher than he is, they would make it his promotional examination. Kelvin enters the bar and he is surprised as he sees Ainge with a lot of other people who had come to celebrate with him and he notices that Ephil and Claire are in some kind of weird cooking competition, then he also realizes that Claire is married to Erd. Other adventurers begin to wonder what Kelvin's relationship with Sarah is about, and he tells them that she is his servant. Later that night, Sarah goes outside, and she begins to talk to herself as she remembers that Victor had promised her that he would teach her how to swim once she visits the sea for the first time. Then she recounts all of the fun things she had always wanted to do, and she vows to live her best life just like her father and Victor had wanted for her but unknown to Sarah, Kelvin had had everything she said. After a few weeks of staying with Kelvin and his party, Sarah feels better as she has accepted her fate and has decided to live a better life. She has agreed to join Kelvin's servant network by accepting his contract. Kelvin and Ethel build their gears for battle, and they make Sarah try out her own gear while they present Gerard with a new sword. Kelvin tells his party that he is tired as he had spent days working on the weapons. He informs them that he feels like eating rice, and they all look at him as Ephil cluelessly asks him what rice is censor. <coughs> Kelvin begins to explain to them, and he realizes that they still are so dumb that they do not know what rice is. Due to this, they all agree that they must get rice for Kelvin. The party set out to Torridge and on their way. Sarah begins to look outside as she becomes excited by what she is seeing and Kelvin tells himself that he is trying to keep Victor's promise to her father by taking her to new places for her to see the world. Gerard asks Kelvin where Melfina is and he tells him that she had told him that she would try to use one of her abarters so that he would be able to summon her then she also told him that she was going on another trip. Suddenly their carriage gets stopped by a group of bandits and the leader of the bandit tells the rider of the carriage that they are a group of bandits called the Black Wind. Kelvin looks at them with his appraisal eye, and he sees that they are all in level below level 30, then he sends Sarah, who is already in level 75, to go and play with them. But when she tries to take a weapon, he stops her, and tells her that she would make a mess if she uses it. 
Sira goes to meet the bandits, and she beats them up including the strongest man of their team, but after tying them with ropes, Kelvin and Ifil goes to meet Sarah and the leader of the gang, tells them that they cannot defeat their boss who is a level 70 fighter, and Kelvin tells the leader to tell him more about their boss. On getting to Toraj, Sarah sees the sea, and she becomes excited, but she tells herself that she has gotten to the sea, but Victor is not there to teach her how to swim like he had promised her, then she immediately turns to Kelvin and asks him to teach her how to swim. She also asks Ifil if she would love to swim as well and Ifil tells her that she would love to try it then, Kelvin tells the ladies that their luggage is still in the carriage, and they would have to come back another time. Soon Kelvin and his party goes to the Adventurer Guild in Torridge, and they meet the guildmaster named Mist who tells them that Leo had told her about Kelvin. She explains to them that she was in the same party with Leo 20 years back. Mist tells Kelvin and his party that she had given the information they got from the Bland Wind Bandits to the other adventurers as the boss of the gang named Kristoff is a national hero in Trison, which makes it difficult for them to take wrong steps in catching the bandits, so as not to get into a war between Torridge and Trison. Mist also adds that Kristoff has engaged in kidnapping people and using them for his slave trade. Then, Kelvin begins to tell himself that Kristoff's rank is not as high as he had expected it to be, but he would make sure he helps the people of a Torridge defeat their nemesis. Kelvin talks to Sarah using their servants network, and he tells her that she should try to use her powers to see if she can sense any powerful adventurers coming to the city. She tells him that she can sense a group of four powerful adventurers entering the city. Kelvin informs Mist that she should contact the heroes so that they can help them while they go to prepare how they would be able to defeat Kristoff. The heroes of Duramus go to the Adventurers Guild and Mist tells them that they should go and save the kidnapped people Kristoff and his gang had locked up. She also adds that she had sent a group of ranked adventurers as well. Setsuna, who is one of the heroes, tells Toya, the only guy in the group, that they should not go on any jobs given to them as they are supposed to head to another place according to the instructions given to them by the goddess. However, Toya tells Satsuna that they are supposed to help people in need of their services as heroes. Meanwhile, Kelvin and his group go to the building where the people that were kidnapped are and they rescue a mother and her child called Luca, from one of the men in charge named Hope as he tried to take her away to defile her. Gerard kills Hope and they all proceed to where Kristoff is, and they find him with a lady called Pizra and another man who had told Kristoff that he really needs to find someone stronger to fight with. Kelvin and his party enter the room, and they all defeat the three as Kelvin tells them that they are not his target. The heroes enter the building, and they begin to wonder why the building is quiet. When they get to where the kidnapped people are, they see a huge slime, and as Toya is about to attack Clotho, Luca immediately goes in front of Clotho, and tells Toya that Clotho is the pet of the adventurer that had rescued them. Toya tells the people that they are heroes after been warned by Setsuna, not to reveal their true identity then Luca's mother tells Toya that they have to go and save the adventurers that saved them as they had gone to face the men who kidnapped them for their slave trade. Toya and his group goes to the last room and they find Kristoff and the rest dead, then they all think Kristoff and the other people were the ranked adventurers sent by Mist, but when they check the whole room, they see Kelvin and his party and Toya immediately gets in a position to fight as he tells Kelvin that they must be the group that kidnapped the innocent people and they are also responsible for killing the rank adventurers that were sent to rescue the people.